Hi everyone, welcome back to Nanom in the Science Metaverse. Today I'm joined by Dr. Asher Brandt, who just became professor of biochemistry at the University of St. Joseph in Connecticut, specializing in psychedelic uh, pharmacology. We're going to discuss a recently published paper about how single nucleotide polymorphisms, pronounced uh, SNPs, might alter the pharmacological signaling of potentially therapeutic psychedelics. So, Asher, congratulations again on your new position, and thank you for joining us again in Nanum. Thanks, Daniel. I'm really excited to actually be a legitimate psychedelic drug researcher at a university now, finally. Awesome. So what's going on with this research paper? Yeah, basically, so the Roth Research Group looked at uh, 12 common amino acid um, mutations at serotonin 2A receptor and how those mutations lead to different potency, efficacy, and signaling outcomes of a lot of the classic psychedelics. And this research is really clinically useful in that I think it really points to eventual um, designer drugs in such a way that you could go to a doctor's office, they could sequence your genome, and they can predict how a specific drug will interact with you based on your um, sequence homology of a receptor that might differ from, a, I say, a, a person with a non-mutated uh, sequence. SNPs, or single nucleotide polymorphisms, basically, they are the most common you know, type of genetic variation among people. Um, specifically, it's a genomic variant at a single base position in the DNA, which um, leads to single point amino acid mutations in the protein as well, right? So what it means is here we have a double helix of DNA, which everybody's familiar with, and, you know, we can put look for a nucleotide, go ahead and select this one here, for example, this is an adenine. Yeah, let's say it, it uh, mutates to a guanine or a thiamine. And so these mutations can be synonymous, meaning that the protein that eventually gets synthesized, it's just exactly the same with the same amino acids. But it can also be non-synonymous, right? When the codon does the translation process in the cell, the, the amino acid that results from this coding DNA, it's going to be actually slightly different. I mean, a different amino acid making a slightly different protein overall, right? So that's the whole point we're going to be discussing today and seeing how this mutated protein that comes from the mutated DNA might have some pharmacological differences. Okay, so here we have the paper again. And so I'm just going to scroll down to the first figure, which is a snake plot showing all the mutated amino acids in pink. As you can see here, this is the extracellular domain. And down here, this is the intracellular domain, right? Which couples with uh, downstream signaling proteins, right? Such as beta, beta restin and G protein. So what's interesting here, Asher? Can you comment on that? Yeah, I mean, overall, what I want to talk about is the fact that there's a histidine residue down here, 452, that when it gets mutated, um, it actually has a pretty drastic effect on cellular signaling outcomes um, of a lot of the psychedelics. But then if you go to the top a little bit, Daniel, near extracellular group number two, um, this yeah. residue mutation here, which is actually part of the lid mechanism that uh, Brian Roth's research group discovered, it actually doesn't affect the. It actually does not affect psychedelics too much, which is interesting because it's it's within the orthosteric binding site. Um, right. And now let's go down to some of the plots. It's the extracellular loop number two here, which is critical. It's just interesting how this mutation doesn't affect that much. But this one down here does affect quite a lot, apparently. It's, it's fascinating from that perspective. Right. <laughs> I would have expected the opposite. <laughs> yeah, totally. Okay, so let's discuss figure two. We're talking about efficiency and potency here, right? We have xylosine mm, yeah, we're, and mescaline. We're basically talking mm -hmm. about the, the efficacy and the potency um, about how when we have a histidine 452 mutation and then we have psilocin as our drug, look how much drastically less effic efficacious the compound is with that mutation. It's huge. Right. And also the potent, there's a change in the potency clearly. 
And if we compare that, let's say to just for example, serine 12, asp serine 12 aspergine, notice how that mutation at mescaline when you have the drug, the potency right. actually increases. Wow. So basically it's, uh, it's drug dependent, right? All this. Absolutely 100% correct. Yes. It's drug dependent and mutation dependent. Mm -hmm. Wow. Fascinating. And we have here also a bias plot on another figure, I believe figure four, not this one, but this one. Yeah, this is a bias plot. And basically we have baseline here with a zero, meaning there's no bias towards either the G protein pathway or the beta arresting signaling pathway. Um, basically, you know, you have zero, which represents no bias. And then when you see a deviation from that, like up here, okay, or if it were to go under, for example, down here, you see a right. star because that is a t statistically significant outcome. The punchline of this is that when you have the histidine 452 um, tyrosine mutation and a lot of these, you see that the bias actually flips. For example, this one with silicin, you see it more going towards the GQ or G protein pathway. Okay, and also right here with silicin. Okay, but down here, for example, with 5-amino DMT, when you have the mutation, the bias is completely different, being more towards the beta arrestin 2 pathway. So it right. really shows you, once again, that it's drug dependent, and it's also amino acid dependent. But the key point is that histidine tyrosine 452 mutation drastically alters the bias effect of a lot of psychedelics. That's fascinating. And so here we have the database from the NCBI, which is a National Center for Biotechnology Information. And here you can go ahead and type 5-HT for the serotonin receptor. And let's see what hits we get. So we get a lot of things, but the one we're interested in here right now is the OMIM, which is the online Mendelian database for humans. And so we have 13 results apparently. And yeah, we can see here 5-HT receptor, 2A. And so if I click here, we're gonna see some data. And uh, yeah, apparently this polymorphism is associated with things like alcohol dependence, anorexia, depression, schizophrenia, you know, OCD and things like that. Makes sense it's, since it's, um, right, it's a brain receptor, right, in, involved in all these processes and, and including psychedelic effects. So, yeah, and here is, this is telling you the location in, within the chromosomes, and I guess we could access more data here, but for now, let's explore this structure anyways. How's that? That sounds awesome. All right, so we have here the 5-HT 2A serotonin receptor, and we have it actually docked with LSD, right? And so this is a rainbow representation. We have, first off, I want to mention we have this serine 242, which is important for binding. We have a strong hydrogen bond here, and then a salt breach here with this other residue. So relating to this study, we I have highlighted two um, amino acids. The one you mentioned before, actually, the alanine 230, which mutates to threonine, right? But yeah, that's correct. Didn't seem to make that much of an effect anyway, as we just saw on, in the plot. Which, which blew our minds because it's right near the orthosteric binding site. <laughs> right, it's supposed to make an effect when it mutates, but, but it doesn't really. However, the other one, the histidine that you mentioned, which is not even shown here because it, it wasn't even solved experimentally. It's like below in the in the receptor, somewhere down here, that one does make a huge effect. That's great. And then we have uh, this isoleucine also mutates to a valine also, and also made some, some sort of effect as well. Let's mutate it actually real quick. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So we can open the modify menu here and the mutation menu, and basically just mutate this isoleucine to valine Boom, and we have a few rotamers apparently that we can cycle through. 
But basically, this is what happens in this uh, polymorphism here. But then we also have yeah the alanine that we mentioned. And this guy he actually mutates to a threonine. So let's mutate that to a threonine. I guess we could also comment on the fact that the threonine, it points away from the binding. Even though it's technically interacting with the binding pocket, it points away from the binding pocket versus inside. Could be, could be some speculation there as to why it doesn't have an effect. That's right. No, that makes a lot of sense. I, I, you know, I speculate also that if this residue here was the one being mutated, it might make uh, a difference. And of course, if that was the serine 242, that will make also a big difference if there's no binding in here, right? I mean, there would be yeah. perhaps no, no effects at all, no binding at all, perhaps. So, yeah. So if you take a psychedelic and it has no effect, maybe you have one of these mutations that are really important. Maybe the aspartic <laughs> acid 155 is mutated and the salt bridge doesn't even form and it doesn't attach at all. So if there are people out there that don't have any effect from psychedelics, we might have some answers uh, for you. <laughs> exactly. So by the way, another thing we did is we docked uh, psilocin here in this binding pocket. And so, yeah, in gray, now we have psilocin, the active drug from, uh, from magic mushrooms. And this is docked here. We docked it in Nanum with uh, the plugin system. We have Autodox Mina uh, available. And yeah, I'm going to cycle through different results. We have five docking poses, actually. Let's see. This is number one, and actually it's the one that looks better. We can, if we keep going, we have different results, but this pose here doesn't make much sense. It's far away from the serine 242. This one is even further away, so I don't like it. We can actually rank this. I'm gonna give it uh, number one because this one's pretty bad. However, this five one, yeah, this is pretty good. I'm gonna give it a five stars. But then the number one, the docking post number one is actually the best one. It has a lower energy value here, meaning it binds slightly tighter. And visually, it just makes a lot of sense how it's binding here, right? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to have the hydrogen bond with serine 242. But notice how, Daniel, all of them have the salt bridge. I'm pretty sure, you know, the, the positively charged NH is common amongst all of them. Yeah. Let's take a look, yeah. I'm going to calculate those interactions. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. We found a salt bridge right here. We also found the hydrogen bond here, but not with the serotonin. Sorry, not with the serine residue, but with another residue. That's interesting. And then also, of course, we have some stacking interactions there. But this is so curious, right? How? Yeah, you've got the, that's an, asper, that's an aspergine over there. Aspergine hydrogen bond with the the alcohol group on the um, psilocin molecule. Another thing we could do that we've done multiple times in the past, and it's just so awesome to do, of course, mm -hmm. is to show a surface here and blow this up and get into the pocket. Just let's just sneak in here and see how we can do this in VR. It's just fascinating. You scale it up and that's it. You are inside the binding pocket and it's just fascinating. <laughs> yeah, that is, it's a really cool, Surface is a really nice way to see how the three-dimensional snug fit between the, um, like, you know, the, the glove. I use the glove analogy a lot. Where right. your receptor is your baseball glove and that has a certain three-dimensional shape and the drug also being your baseball in the analogy has a three-dimensional shape. You can kind of see how the, the shape complement complements one another, the two shapes. That's what I like about Surface personally. Great. So thank you so much, Asher, for joining us again. Always a pleasure having you here in Nanom discussing recent amazing research on psychedelics and GPCR receptors. And hopefully this will make an impact in people at some point. Yeah, lastly, I just want to comment. I hope a lot of this research leads to individualized medicine where you can figure out what polymorphisms an individual has and you can, you can cater a drug to account for those polymorphisms. Exactly, this is a great point. This is just literally gearing 
directly towards personalized medicine. So because people can have different effects, not, not just from a psychedelic um, trip or, or experience, but also physiological uh, side effects such as uh, body temperature, things like that. You know, some people experience those symptoms, some people don't. And this whole uh, polymorphism might just explain why that happened. Absolutely. Awesome. So thanks again. Thanks for everyone watching. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time.